Hello and welcome to God in the Family, a series where I, Gershley Karen Pierre, speak about biblical concepts and tie that into our population, our families, our communities, and of course, our God, so that we can help make better sense of our place in this world and what I perceive would be God's ideal society for us. There is no literal scripture that says, get your houses in order but it's often paraphrased by believers. It's a concept taken from a conversation between God and Hezekiah. Hezekiah wasn't intelligent. He showed way too many secrets of his house. He made himself easier to conquer by another nation by his bad decision making. So God told him as judgment, get your house in order because you're going to die. But I believe that concept isn't inaccurate if you were to paraphrase it, if you were to say as a metaphor, get your houses in order. And the reason I state this is because of what that concept means on a larger scale, if it were to be practiced, how that can structurally advantage those who hear that scripture. I'm going to look at that scripture from a leveled and not just contextual format. I'm actually going to take it and paraphrase it, have it be relevant to a larger storyline, a larger truth that on an individual level and collective level can be attainable. When I think of houses, I think of the house of Israel, how God refers to his population as being one composite identity, one way of life. And so he would want, I would think, if you were to individually get your houses in order for that to be structurally aligned, but on a composite level. So as you individually get your houses in order, you're also accumulating this large scale order because you can't get an entire population in order if you don't regulate the individuals within that population. Which leads me to the concept of domestic versus large scale. God likes things to be structured, ordered, detailed, and to have a long scale series of mechanisms that can make life easier and have it be more sensical. And aligning this get your houses in order concept to his people, there has to be structure. There has to be regulating human behavior. There has to be a way to tend to humans as resources so they could be more viable options as a resource to another person who could potentially create family with them. There has to be a way to make people not just exist, but make life around them easier in the ways that we choose to exist. Make this life more habitable for pair bonding, reproduction. Like he says, he knows the plans he has for us. He wants to give you an expected end. Get your houses in order speaks on something that humans can do within themselves rather than something that can happen outside of you. Because if you think of your house as the place that is your lived environment, the place that you spend the most of your time, the place that you can be yourself, the place that has your belongings, where your most vulnerable lived existence is being fulfilled and your secrets and your truths are in the privacy of your house. Well, if you get that in order, Rather than getting someone else's house in order, it makes more sense because that's the place you know. If you go to someone's house and, quote, get it in order, you'd have to learn where everything is. You're not as familiar with the environment. You don't know the functions of that lived environment. But your house, which belongs to you and is the closest to you, that's the place that you understand the most. Now, applying that get your houses in order standard to the house of Israel or to populations is to say that you can't focus on the factors outside of you, how they work, why they're working the way they are. Rather, you're supposed to focus on the factors you can control because it is your life. And if you can't even tend to the life that you know and that you have and that belongs to you, how much less would you be able to do that to someone else's, quote, house?
He never told Israel to care about what the other nations think. He never told them to change how the other nations think. But he told them they would think a certain way. For example, the scripture says, If you are righteous, God can even make your enemies respect you. It's to say that if you're so regulated, if you're so structured, that even if someone were to hate you, they would ultimately respect you because your behaviors were in a right standing of God's order. But if you are already hated, it's not to say that God did not tell his people they would be hated. It's to say he did not tell them how to change that because all he wanted them to fulfill was to fix the patterns of behavior within themselves. And them failing to do that is what led to their judgment. Because even indirectly, when you have a highly regulated society that benefits the sanctity of the group, the safety of the group, the dynamics of the group. But you don't want to incentivize chaos with a lack of regulation of behavior. And that's why scripture was created in the first place. It's a manual to regulate. And if you don't have anything that can help descriptively or on a documentation level or on a level that is structurally accurate, then what do you have? subjective themes and norms that can easily be eroded but to have a standard like the Bible says that God puts up a standard is to have a binary is to have a way of life so you can know what is good what is bad not everything goes marriage in and of itself is structurally a standard the behaviors that people have to become married and stay married is God's standards and a world with standards is a world that is suitable and reasonable for the people living in it because you want a world where the most vulnerable people, the offspring, can actually be at peace. You want a world where the adult parties who create those offspring can get along because they cause the most harm to themselves and each other. And you want a world where everybody has high stakes to gain or lose. And if you have a world of a high concentration of marriages and families, that's a lot of people that you have to somehow transcend if you were to do wicked things. Because those people come with their own families and their own spouses, so that could be a wall of defense. At that point, they can join in a shared sense of risk. When God said, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, you want heaven in earth, don't you? You don't want hell in earth. We have hell in earth in many of our environments because there's no regulation, there's no standards, nothing to procure the population in a functional way. This is the first God in the family since announcing my hiatus, and it's been a while, but it's great to be able to potentially resume this specific series. And let's get our houses in order. Let's get our collective in order. Not try to get in order other groups who have their own houses and families and structures they get in order. That is all I have. Thank you so much for listening for this episode of God in the Family. Stay tuned for more.